Chapter 8. The fox began to starve. That evening, three tents were put up in the crater on the hill. One for Vargas, one for Boots, and one for Bean. The tents surrounded Mr. Fox's hole, and the three farmers sat outside their tents, eating their supper. Vargas had three boiled chicken smashes with dumplings. Boons had six donuts filled with disgusting goose liver paste, and Bean had two gallons of cider. All three of them keeping their guns beside them. So, all three of them kept their guns behind them. Bogus picked up a steaming chicken and held it close to the fox's hole. Can you smell this, Mr. Fox? He shouted. Lovely tender chickens. Why don't you come up and get it? The rich scent of the chicken wafted through the tunnel, and there was fox were crouching. Oh, that's a word to small fox. Couldn't we just sneak up and snatch it out of its den? Don't you dare, said Mr. Fox. They're just... They just... What they want to do. But we are so hungry, they cried. How long will it till? We get something to eat. This mother didn't answer that, nor did their father. There's no answer to give. As darkness fell, moons and beans switched on the powerful headlamp of the two tractors and shone them into the hole. Now, we'll take a turn and keep watch. One watch chase while two sleep. So it will all through the night. Boggy said, What if the fox digs a hole right through the hill and comes to the other side? You didn't think of that once, did you? Of course I did, he said, pretending he did. he had. Go on, then tell us the answer. He picked something small and black up to his ear and flicked away. How many men have you been working on this farm? Thirty-five. I got thirty-six. I then I got thirty-seven. He said, "There makes one hundred and eight men together. We must order them to surround the hill. Each man will have a gun and a flashlight. There will be no escape for them, for Mister Fox." Ah, 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 ah. So the order went down the farm, and there were n- and that night one hundred and eight men formed a tight ring round the bottom of the hill. They were armed with sticks and gun and hatchet and pistols and all sorts of other horrible weapons. This made it quite impossible for a fox or indeed any other animals to escape from the hill. The next day. The watching and waiting went on. Boggies and Boons and Bean sat upon the small stool, staring at the fox's hole. They didn't talk much. They just sat there with their guns on their laps. Ever so often, Mr. Fox would creep a little closer towards the mouth of the tunnel, take a sniff, and he would creep back and say, They are still there. Are you quite sure, Mr. Fox? Was there? Father said, I can smell the man, the man <coughs> being a mile away. He stinks. End of chapter 8. Chapter 9. Mr. Fox had a plan for three days and three nights. This waiting game went on. How long can a fox go without food and water, Boggy? Asked for the third day. Not much longer now, Bean told him. He'll make a run for it soon. We'll have to. 
Bean was right. Down in the tunnel, the fox was slowly but surely starving to death. It only we have just a tiny sip of water, said one of the small foxes. Oh, Dad, can you do something? Can we make a dash for it? Dad, let's have a little bit of a chance, won't we? No chance at all, snapped Mr. Fox. I refuse to let you go up there and face those guns. I'll be sooner you stay down here and die in peace. Mr. Fox has not spoken for a long time. He had been sitting quite still, his eyes closed, not even hearing what the other was saying. Mrs. Fox knew that he was crazy, definitely to think of a way out. And now, as she looked at him, he saw him steer himself and get slowly to his feet. He looked back at his wife. There was a little spark of excitement dancing in his eyes. What is it, darling? said Mr. Fox quickly. I've got a bit of an... Idea. Hey, hey. What? They cried. Oh, Dad, please tell us what it is. Come on, said Mrs. Fox. Tell us quickly. Well, Mr. Fox then he stopped and sighed and said, let's shake his head. He sat down and said, it's no good. He won't work after all. Why not? Because it means more digging and we aren't any of us strong enough to get after three days night. Three days and night without food. Yes, we are, Dad. Cried the small foxes, jumping up and running to the father. We can do it. We, you see, if we can't, you so can you. Mr. Fox looked at the four small foxes and he smiled. What a what fine children I have! He thought. They were starving to death, and they hasn't had any drinks for three days, but. They are still undefeated. I must not let them down. I I suppose we we'll could give it a try, he said. <sighs> Let's go, Dad! Tell us what you want us to do. Slowly, Mr. Fox got got to her feet. She was suffering more than any of them from the lack of food and water. She was very weak. I, I am so sorry, she said, but I think I'm going to be of much help. You stay right where you are, my darling, said Miss Fox. We can handle this by ourselves. End of chapter 9. Chapter 10. Bogus Chicken House number one. This time we want to go on a very special direction. He said when excited and downwards. So we he has his four children starting to dig once again. The work went much 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 more slowly now. Yet they kept at it in a great courage. And little by little the tunnel began to grow. That I wish you would tell us where we were going, said the chicken. I dare not to do that because this place I'm hoping to get it, this to do is so marvelous that if we describe you, you will go crazy with if, if excitement. And then it, if we fail to get there, which is very possible, you will die of disappointment. I don't want to tell you, my darlings. I take up. Mm. For a long, long time, they kept on digging. For how long, they did not know. 
because there were no days and no nights down there in the murky tunnel. But at least Mr. Fox gave the order to stop. I think he said we had to better take a peep above upstairs now and see where where we are. I knew that I well want to be, but I can't possibly show we have anywhere near it. Slowly and merrily, the fox began to slope and turn the tunnel up towards the surface. Up and up it went, until suddenly they came to something hard above the head, and they couldn't go any further. Mr. Fox reached in the statement. These hard things. It would. Wooden planks. What does that mean? It means unless I am very much miscavelled that we're right under, underneath someone's house, whispered Mr. Hawk. Be very careful while I take a peek. Carefully, Mr. Fox began pushing up one of the floorboards. The board creaked most terribly and they ducked down, waiting for something awful to happen. Yes, indeed. So, Mr. Fox pushed the second board and then very, very cautiously, he pulled his head out from the gap. He let a shriek of excitement. I've done it, I said. I'm miracle. Wow, 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 wow. Bucket's chicken house number one, cried Mr. Boss. It's exactly what I was aiming at. I hit the slap of the middle. First time, isn't that fantastic? And is in the middle. If I may say so, rather clever. The small fox went wild with excitement. He started running around in all directions, casting the stupid chickens. Wait, ordered Mr. Fox. Don't lose your head. Stand back. Calm down. Let's do it properly. First of all, everybody. Have a drink of water. They all ran to the chickens drinking through and laughed on the, the lovely cool water. Then Mr. Fox chose the three of the plumbest hands and with a clever freak of his jaw and killed them instantly. After the tunnel he ordered, come on, no fooling around. The quicker you move, the quicker you shall have something to eat. One after another, they climbed down the hole to the floor. Soon they were all standing once in the dark tunnel. Mr. Fox reached in, reaching once again in the dark tunnel. Mr. Fox reached up and pulled the floorboards back into the place. He did it with the great care. He did it so that no one could tell that they had ever been moved. My son, he said, giving the three pumps plum hands to the biggest of the four four small chickens four small children run back with these with the mother tell you to pro tell you to prepare a feast tell her the rest of us will be along in the jiffy as soon as we have made a few other little arrangements end of chapter 11 chapter 11 a surprise for Mrs. Fox. The small fox ran back along the tunnel as fast as he could, carrying the three plum hands. He was exploding with joy. Just wait, he kept thinking. Just wait till mommy sees these. He had a long way to run, but he never stopped once on the way, and he came bursting out upon upon Mr. Fox, Mrs. Fox. Mommy, he cried out of breath. Look, Mommy, look. Wake up and see what I brought you. Mrs. Fox, who was weaker than ever, now from the lake of food, opened one eye and looked at the hands. I'm dreaming, she murmured and closed the eyes again. You're not dreaming, Mommy. They're a real chicken. We're safe. We're not going to starve. Mr. Fox opened both eyes and said out quickly, But my dear child... She cried, what on earth? Bucket's chicken house number one, alerted Mr. Smallhouse. We turned right 
right up under the floor and you'll never see so many big fat hands in all your life. And then set it to prepare a feast. They'll be back soon. The sight of food seemed to give new strength to Mrs. Fox. A feast it shall be, she said, standing up. Oh, what a fantastic your father is. Hurry up, hurry up, child, and then start plucking those chickens. Far away down in the tunnel, the fantastic Mr. Fox was saying, Now for the next bit, my darling. Then this will be easy as pie. We, all we have to do is dig another little tunnel from here to there. To where, Dad? Don't ask so many questions. Start digging. End of chapter 11. Chapter 12. Badger. Mr. Fox and the three remaining small foxes dug fast and straight. They were too excited to know to feel tired or hungry like that. They knew they were going to have a wacky breakfast before long. And the fact it was none other than the foxes' chickens they were going to eat made them church with laughter every time. They thought of it. It was lovely to realize that the wild, the far, fat farmer was sitting up there on the hill, waiting for them to start. He was also giving them their dinner without knowing it. Keep digging, said Mr. Fox. It's not much further. All of a sudden, a deep voice about the hill. Who goes there? The foxes jump. They looked quickly and they saw, peeking through the holes in the roof of the tunnel, a long black pointy furry face. Badger! cried Mr. Fox. Foxy! cried Badger. Good, my goodness me, I'm glad I found someone at last. I've been digging around in circles for three days and nights, and I haven't the foggiest idea where I am. Foggies made a hole in the ceiling bigger and dropped down beside the fox. A small badger with sun dropped down after it. Haven't you heard what's happening on the hill? Badger said to Sydney. It's chaos. Half of the wood has disappeared, and there are men with guns all over the countryside. None of us get out, even at night. We're all starving to death. Who is we? All us diggers. That's me and Mole and Rabbit and all of our wives and the children. Even Weasel, who can usually sneak out in the tightest spot, is right now, now hiding down my hole. With Mrs. Weasel and Six Kid. What on earth are we going to do, Foxy? I think we're finished. Mr. Fox looked at the three child children and we all smiled. The children looked, smiled back at them, sharing his secret. My dear old badger, he said, this mess were all my fault. I knew it was your fault, the badger furiously. And the farmer are not going to give up till we get you. Unfortunately, they mean us as well. It means everyone on the hill. Badger sat down and put a paw around the small son. We're done for, he said softly. My poor wife up there is so weak that she can't dig another yard. Not to mind, said Mr. Fox. And yet, at this very moment, she is preparing for a feast for me and my children, the most delicious feast of clumpy, juicy chicken in the world. Stop, cried Badger. Don't tease me. I can't stand it. It's true, said Badger. Don't tease me. It's true, said the small foxes. That's not teasing. We've got chickens galore. And because everything was entirely my fault, said Mr. Fox, I invite you to share my feast. I, in I invite everyone to share it. You and Mo and Rabbit and Weasel and all your wives and children. There'll be plenty to go around. I can assure you, you mean it, said Badger. You really mean it? Mr. Fox pushed his face close to Badger's hand and whispered darkly, Do you know where we got them? Right inside Boggy's Chicken House number one. No. Yes, but there is uh, nothing to wear. Where we are going to now, 
You have just come in the right moment, my dear Badger. You can help us, D. And in the meanwhile, you and you, your small children, can run back to Mrs. Rex and all the children spread the good news. Mr. Fox turned to Small Badger and said, Tell them they are invited to the fox's feast. Then bring them all down there and follow this tunnel back where, where until you find my home. Yes, Mr. Fox and Mrs. the Small Badger. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Oh, thank you, sir. And he screamed, screamed. He scrambled quickly back to the hall of the roof and the tunnel disappeared. End of chapter 12. Chapter 13. Bloom's Great Storehouse. My dear Foxy, said Badger, what is in word has happened to your tail? Don't talk about it, please, and it's a, lot, it's a painful subject. They were digging a new tunnel. They dug on in silence. Badger was a great digger, and the tunnel went forward at a terrific pace. Now that he was lending a paw, soon they were crouching on their knees on oh, yet another wooden floor. Mr. Fox grinned sadly, show his sharp white teeth. Says, if I'm not mistaken, my dear Mrs. Badger, I believe. We are not underneath the part which belong to the nasty little pot belly dwarf boots. We are, in fact, directly under the most inter- interesting part of the farm. Duck and geese, cried the small foxes, sis licking their lips, juicy and tender ducks and big fat geese. Exactly, said Mr. Fox. But how in the earth can you know, know where we are? Look, I knew my way around this farm blindfolded. For me, they're just easy below the ground as it above. He reached high and pushed another one wooden flopper, then another. He poked his head around it. Yes, I shall lead. Jumping up in the room above, I've done it again. I've seen the smack in the snow. Right in the blue eyes. Come and look. Quickly, Badger and the three small foxes scrambled up after him. They stopped and stared. They stood and ga- gasped. They were so overwhelmed they couldn't speak. For, for what they now saw was a kind of fox's dream, a badger's dream, a paradise dream of four hungry animals. This, my dear old badger, Prasloon, Mr. Fox, it's Boonsy's mighty storage house. All the fire stuff is stored in here before he sent us to market against all the four walls of the great room stacked in cupboards and piled upon shelves of the reaching from floor to ceiling there a thousand of geese and plucked ready for roasting yeah In many drool. And up above, dangling from the rafters, there must be at least a hundred smoked ham and, and fifty sides of bacon. 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 Just keep your eyes on that, said Mr. Fox, dancing up and down. What do you think, eh? Pretty good grub. Eh?
suddenly I saw springs had been released in their legs. The three hungry small foxes and the rain of his hungry badger sprang forward to grab the luscious food. Stop! ordered Mr. Fox. This is my party, so I shall I shall do the choosing. The other fell back, licking their chops. Mr. Fox began prowling around in the in their storage house, gleaming with pride. Examining the glorious display with expert eyes. Ah, uh, this is the most wonderful story. And there was a screen glory display with an expert eyes. A thread of Celebra slid down one side off the jaws and hung suspendly in mid-air, then snapped. We mustn't overdo it. Mustn't give the game away. Mustn't let them know they that we've we've been up game up to. We just have to be neat and tidy and take just a few of the choices mozel. So to start with, we shall have a plump young duck. He said, took, and he took them from the shelves. Oh, how lovely and fat they are! No wonder Boone's got a special price of them in the market. All right, better lend me a hand to get them down. Your children can help as well. Oh my, you never see the things finer keys than these on these. Oh my. Oh, oh my. Oh, how lovely they're better. Mm. Mm. can help as well. There we go. Oh goodness. Me. Look how your mouths are watery. And now, I think we better have a few pieces. Three will be quite enough. We'll take the biggest. Oh my, oh my, you'll never see finger these. Then bathe in the king's chicken. Gently does it, gently does it. That's the way and that's how the couple of nice smoked hams. I adore smoked ham, didn't you, Badger? Badger me those step ladder, will you please? Mr. Fox climbed the ladder and and handed down three magnificent hams. And do and do you like bacon, Badger? I'm mad about bacon, cried Badger, dancing with excitement. Let's have a side of bacon. That's big up up there. And the carrots dad, said the smallest of these small foxes. We must take some of these carrots. Don't be a twerp, said Mr. Fox. You know we're never, we'll never eat some things like that. It's not for us, Dad. It's for the rabbits. They only eat vegetables. My goodness me. You're right, cried Mr. Fox. So... So the soft will you little fellows are take ten bunches of carrot. Soon all these lovely loots were lying on nine neat heaps upon the floor, the small foxes crouched close, their nose twitching, their eyes shining like a star. And now, said Mr. Fox, we shall have to borrow from my friend Boone's two of these useful push carts over the corners. He and Badger fetched the push cart and loaded them loaded on them quickly to the push cart and then lowered the ground hole into the floor. The animals slid down after all, back in the tunnel. Mr Fox began to pull the floor very carefully into peace play. 
so that no one could see their head being moved. My darling, he said, pointing to the two of the three small boxes, take a cart each and run back as fast as you as you can to your mother. Give her my love. Give her my love and tell her we we are having a guest for dinner. And Badger and Mole and Rabbit and the Weasel tell her it will be a truly great feast. And do tell her the rest of us will be home as soon as we've done one more little job. Yes, sir, right away, Dad. Oh, thank you, Dad, they answered. And they grabbed a trolley each and went pushing down the tunnel.